Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to talk about game 95 of the regular season where the Astros win 3-1 to one over the Seattle Mariners. We're here to talk about one thing. The fact that I'm going to talk about anything else is just, it's just an added in. We're here to talk about one inning of this game, and it is the seventh. So let's just get there as quickly as possible, because that is the entire game and really the entire video. Fourth inning, Astros back-to-back doubles, Kyle Tucker and Yuli Gurriel, awesome, right? Big instance, both of them coming through for us, putting us up two to nothing in the fourth, fantastic. Giving Verlander the traditional, like, two runs of run support, as is tradition. Like, that's, that's to what you expect. And it was silent for the rest of it, right? The Astros only got two runs off of Logan Gilbert. I thought he pitched exquisitely. I thought he was absolutely magnificent. Mariners fans... You should hang your hat on his performance today. He was fantastic. 18 swings and misses, by the way. He was really good. <laughs> Seventh inning, though. This is all that matters. The Astros come into this game with an absolutely taxed bullpen via injury, paternity leave, or usage from the doubleheader in yesterday's game. Our bullpen was very, very depleted, and we needed a big, heroic performance out of Justin Verlander, and the veteran delivered in every way you could possibly have hoped for. No, statistically, this is not Justin Verlander's best performance of the season. But I am, for one of the first times in my life, going to say, statistics be damned. This was the best performance Justin Verlander has given us this season. And honestly, in my eyes, this goes down as one of the best performances of his career. And the seventh inning was just simply historic. So the seventh inning starts. Jesse Winker flies out. Okay, we're moving. We're good. Then Carlos Santana homers. And that isn't great because since we only gave him the per usual, like two runs of run support, now the lead's only one and any real mistake could come back to bite us pretty severely. And then it continues to build up. Genio Suarez walks and then Adam Frazier singles. And all of a sudden, Verlander's six innings of shutout baseball has turned into a run allowed, and runners at the corners with only one out. And it gets worse because Adam Frazier steals second. And now you're up against the eight ball. And the monster that the Mariners awoke with Justin Verlander in this inning is something that I have not seen. And I am nearly at a loss for words of what Justin Verlander did. And I need to emphasize this because I don't know what else to say. It is completely jaw-dropping to look at it. Verlander threw a fastball to Jesse Winker. It was 94.7. And out of thin air, out of nowhere, Verlander... And by the way, on the next batter, he didn't throw a single fastball to Santana. He threw all off speed. And then out of thin air, just from being pissed off, pulled three to five mile an hour extra out of just out of his bag, nearing the 100 pitch mark. And Cal Raleigh was the first unwilling victim of Verlander's spree to finish this off. 97.2, 98.4, 98.4 again, 97.7, 99.3, 99.2, drops in a curve for a foul at 81, and then back to the heater at 99.2 to get the swinging strike on Cal Raleigh. And this is relevant because 807 fastballs. Justin Verlander, before this game, had thrown 807 fastballs this season. One was over 99 miles an hour, and he threw three consecutive fastballs that were over 99 in a single at bat, nearing the 100 pitch mark. He also threw another 99 against Kyle Lewis that should have been a swinging strike and should have ended the game or ended his outing there, but it didn't. Kyle Lewis would draw a walk, and then he got to bully Sam Haggerty for the final out of the his inning or his outing. Fastball, 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 all high in the zone, and a swing and a miss to finish off Verlander's day against Sam Haggerty. Sam Haggerty, who by the way, very limited sample size, but his best third of the zone is high. Verlander put it right in his wheelhouse and blew him away with pitches nearing the 100 pitch mark. I don't know what else to say. Hey look, it's me editing the video. I was interested and I decided I'd come in because I was listening to this part where I'm just, again, singing the praises of Justin Verlander, which need to be sung. And I was interested. Uh, I went back and looked up 2019 for Verlander and all of his four-seam fastballs to try to see how many he threw over 99 because I'm like, man, 
I don't remember him hitting 99 that much in 2019. And that's because he didn't. He did not throw a single 99-mile-an-hour fastball in 2019 when he won the Cy Young Award and was a couple of years younger and not off of Tommy John surgery. Do you understand how good he was today? I, I, do you understand how good Verlander was today in this outing? Justin Verlander, to this point of the season, had thrown three total pitches over 98 miles an hour. And today he threw nine over 98 in the same inning. I'm speechless. I don't say it as much as I should, and it's a shame. I, 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 I need to, because we're not watching simply a great pitcher. We're watching a Hall of Famer and one of the greatest who have ever played this game. Justin Verlander does what the all-time greats can do, which is just find another gear. Weston, it was a regular season game. It was pretty much me. Like, calm down. I, I don't care. I don't care. 39 years old, Justin Verlander off Tommy John surgery, just somehow magically pulled five mile an hour extra out of his bag over 80 and over 90 pitches into a game. I don't know what else to say to sell how unbelievably great Justin Verlander was today. Nine strikeouts, para walks, one run, seven innings of work. Justin Verlander, have an afternoon and have, I understand maybe not statistically, but what is from a total story perspective and just the intangibles the best game of his season and it it isn't close parker mashinsky would also come in and have the highest leverage inning of, to his season and altuve would help turn a beautiful double play to get us out of that inning and then brian abreu in the ninth easy peasy looked pretty darn good and altuve would also cash in i believe in the eighth inning to score on a wild pitch altuve had a pretty solid day but Honestly, anything that isn't just singing the praises of Justin Verlander is second to the storyline for this game. Myers, para hits, incredible defensive catch in the first inning. Mashinsky, heroic. Abreu, great. This was Verlander's world, and we were simply living in it this afternoon. And that's all I have to say for that game. Astros going in tomorrow, 410 Eastern, 310 Central. We are going to send Fran Valdez to the mound, fresh off of his All-Star Game appearance. And the Mariners are going to send Robbie Ray. And I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. But that's all I have to say for the evening. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Strohs.